Hello guys and welcome back to my channel. Today in this video I'm going to check the Furby VX 140 millimeters quadcopter. This is the Futaba version. Gerbes just ran out of all the other versions so they sent me this one. Inside the box we're getting the quadcopter, two sets of spare propellers. These are brandless 3030 propellers. We're getting a bag with uh, velcro, zip ties and a heat ring to secure the radio antenna. In addition, I got two instructions manual. One is for the Futaba receiver, which I'm not going to use. And the other one is a pretty short manual to operate the video transmitter of this quadcopter and also a layout of the flight controller. Changing the receiver is very easy. You don't even have to disassemble the quadcopter and it didn't even come mounted with this sticker. So all I have to do is just unplug it and I'm going to use the FR Sky receiver which was included with the Dark Max and I change it to an XSR. Maybe it's a good idea to use an XSR but currently I don't have a spare one so I'm just going to use this one and it's quite easy. All I have to do is just plug it here. Later on I'm going to bind it. On the front of the quadcopter we can find this 600 TVL CCD camera. This is a clone of the Runcam Micro Swift which I have here and you can see that the front is just the same, just the plastic is different. You can see all the capacitors and the layout. By the way, it doesn't have an OSD, same as the first version of the OneCam Micro Swift. So they chose to use this CCD camera. They also sell it separately. Probably they want to keep the cost low so they didn't use the original one. This entire quadcopter costs right now only $106. So this is probably the cheapest way of getting a mini brushless ready to fly quadcopter. So they chose to use this camera. Probably it's going to perform well, but after all, it's a clone. The motors are 1306 3100 kV motors, which are capable of running between 2 to 4 S LiPo batteries. So although this 20 ampere 4 in 1 AC controller can handle up to 5 S LiPo batteries, you will need to change the motors in order to use it with 5 S LiPo batteries. The 20 ampere 4 in 1 AC controller is flashed with BLLES and it supports DSHOT 600. On the middle, we've got an Omnibus F3 flight controller with a built in OSD which is configurable at Betaflight, which is a great feature. And it comes pre-flashed with Betaflight 3.1.7. On the top, we've got this VTX. It has a selectable output strength of 25 and 150 milliwatts. It supports 40 channels. The weight of the quadcopter without the propellers is 126.7 grams. Including the propellers, it weighs 134.8 grams. And in my test flight, I'm going to fly it with a 2S, 3S, and a 4S LiPo battery. So with the 2S, the weight is 183.2 grams. This is an 850 mAh 2S battery. With the 3S 500 mAh battery, it weighs 182.8 grams. And with the 4S 550 mAh LiPo battery, it weighs 203.1 grams. I'm also going to test it out with this 1000 mAh LiPo battery and the weight including this battery is 247 grams. The design of the frame is a stretched X design and these arms are pretty thick. The thickness is 4 millimeters and they are interchangeable which means that if you break one arm you don't have to change the entire frame so all you need to do is just buy another arm hopefully Gerbers are going to set it and changing it is quite easy. The thickness of the top plate and as well the bottom plates is 1.5 millimeters and the general quality looks really good, the carbon is not shipping and the finish looks quite good, especially for a quadcopter that costs only $105. On the back we've got four bright LED indicators and a very big buzzer that will let you find your quadcopter in case you lost it and especially if you fly at night time or at evening, these LED indicators are also going to be very helpful. Setting up the VTX is done using this button over here. I recommend to use a tweezers or another tool because this button tends to get a little bit hot. The number of times that the green LED indicator flashes tells us which channel we are currently on and the red one indicates the band. So just use this table in order to set your favorite band and channel. 
In order to set it up, you will have to long press this button for 3 seconds until this, the red indicator is going to turn off. Right now you can see that the red indicator flashes once, which means we are on the channel selection mode. Short pressing this button is going to change between all the channels and the green indicator will tell us which channel we are currently on. Then, in order to change it, the band, you have to long press it again for 3 seconds and the red indicator will flash twice. The green LED indicator will indicate which channel we are currently on, so you will need to select one of the five options. And finally, you will have to long press it again for three seconds. And now the red indicator flashes three times and you can select the output strength. When the green LED indicator flashes twice, it's going to be on 150 milliwatts. And if it flashes once, it's going to be set on 25 milliwatts. I'm going to set it up for my test on 150 milliwatts and then just long press it again in order to exit the setup process. By the way, at any given time, you can just long press this button for five seconds and then it's going to exit the setup process as well. So I set it up on B7. So right now when the battery is connected, you can see that the green indicator flashes seven times and the red indicator flashes twice. So I set it up on B7 successfully. Configuring the angle of the camera is done by loosening and tightening the screws on the sides. It goes all the way up to about this angle, which for me is too sharp. So I'm gonna set it up to this angle, maybe a little bit more. So I think this angle should be should do fine. Then just fasten the screws and you're done. Just be careful not to fasten it too much because then the screw can wear down and then you won't be able to use it again. The next thing I'm gonna do, I'm going to bind it to my Taranis then go over the beta flight settings, flash the flight controller to beta flight 3.2 and then take it for a test flight. In the end of the video, I'm going to do two things. First of all, to tell you how was my experience with this quadcopter and I'm also going to announce the winner of the Gearbest Singles Day giveaway. So stay tuned and I hope you enjoy the rest of this video. <music> Unfortunately, I was just about to head out and test it out, but this VTX is not working, it's just dead. So luckily I tested it out before going to the field because I would have been very disappointed. So what I'm gonna do, I'm going to change it with another VTX that I have. So in the following video, you're going to see me using this VTX and not the included one. So you have to take it into consideration that it's not the original one that comes with this quadcopter. So eventually I added this 25 milliwatt transmitter and you can see that this is now working. So these things can happen and if it happens to you, probably Gearbus are going to make up for it and maybe send you a new one. And changing it is not very hard, but still you expect things to work out of the box, especially when you buy a ready to fly quadcopter and I'm going to let Gearbus know about this problem and hopefully it's not going to happen to you as well. So now that this issue is solved, I'm going to take it outside for a test flight.
So overall, as you could see in the video, the X140 flew pretty well and the major problem I had is with the new VTX that I used and it didn't perform well. Hopefully I could have tested it with the original one, but mine was faulty, so I had to use this one. What I'm gonna do soon, I'm going to replace it with another VTX that I found in one of my drawers. That's why I didn't use this one originally because I couldn't find it. But now that I have, I'm going to change it and I'm going to take it again for a test flight Unfortunately, it's not going to happen in this video, but hopefully I will be able to upload a new fixed video on my Facebook or maybe even on my YouTube channel. These are the batteries I used on my test flight, a 4S 1000 mAh, 550 mAh, 4S, 3S 500 mAh, and a 2S 850 mAh batteries. I think that the 2S was okay, but it wasn't powerful enough and you should only use 2S batteries if you are a beginner and you want just to experience flying around and it's not recommended for advanced and even intermediate pilots. The 3S I think was the most successful one and you should get one with a higher C. Unfortunately, I don't have any in the moment, they are on the way, so I had to use this one with only 30C. And if you ask me what is the ideal battery to use this quadcopter with, it's probably a 600mAh 4S battery and this one is not a good battery, it didn't perform well, so you should get a good one to fly this quadcopter with. If you don't want to carry a GoPro or an HD camera, the Lidl 120 is actually a better quadcopter and will provide you with the same speed and maneuvers that this one will get you. And because it's smaller and it's much lighter, it's going to perform well with 3S battery, I think as much this one will perform with a 4S one. So I think that you should get this quadcopter only if you want to fly it with a 4S and an HD camera. This one will give you otherwise the same results. It costs a little bit less and the biggest difference between them besides the motors is that this one has a CMOS camera whereas this one has the clone of the Runcom Swift. So it's a CCD camera, but you can modify the Lido 120 and change the CMOS camera to a CCD camera. And in my opinion, it's not necessary and the quality is pretty good out of the box. So if you're looking for a cheap ready to fly quadcopter, get the Lido 120. So as I told you on the beginning of the video, now it's time for the GearBest Singles Day giveaway. And again, I would like to thank GearBest for sponsoring this giveaway. Unfortunately, we didn't get 300 likes. You see, I liked my video as well in order to help you, but we didn't get the amount of likes that I wanted in order to get the Hubsan H507. The winner is going to get the JJRC H47 quadcopter. So let's get to the draw. We had a total of 125 unique commenters. And now it's time to select the winner. You're going to have one week to contact me via YouTube messages. That's how I know you're the one you say you are. And the winner is...
Jaybon Loco. So Jaybon Loco, congratulations, you just won yourself the JJRC H47 quadcopter and I have more giveaways soon, so stay tuned. I thank you for watching my video, I hope you enjoyed it and you find it useful. If you have any questions about the X140 quadcopter, feel free to ask it in the comment section below. Don't forget to subscribe if you're not already subscribed and see you on my next videos. Goodbye.